Hello, YouTubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of puppets. Today, with a nostalgic uh, review of something that most beer geeks would never touch. And I must say, I don't really drink this anymore. But uh, this is actually going to be my check in number 5000 on Untapped uh, of Unique Beer. I chose this one just for fun because everyone chooses a psycho hype whale and all that. And people have probably choose chosen shit before, but I thought it would be fun because I actually thought it could be a fun beer to talk about uh, and also talk a little bit about like beer history and a little bit about me growing up and whatnot. So I guess everyone has like their kind of high school party beer, at least in Denmark, or I guess it's college beer in the States. Like the legal drinking age in Denmark is 16. So when you're in high school, you, you party and most schools actually have parties. But since you're a teen, you don't have a lot of money. So what do you buy? The cheapest will you can get to get drunk. Or you have rich parents who pay for your stuff, but <laughs> most people, most kids drink some kind of cheap wine or cheap beer or even cheap booze. And this is like the cheapest of the cheapest. Uh, I don't think it's the worst of the worst, but maybe it's because I have a nostalgic relationship for it. So today guys, we're checking out none other than Vestfuden's Kurt Ule Classic. <laughs> Never thought I'd review something like this on the channel, uh, except for maybe the foul beer tasting, which it might have been in, I'm not entirely sure. But this beer uh, was pretty much the first beer I ever drank on my own. Um, the first beer I ever tasted was this. And uh, it was the go-to beer my father always bought. He, it was cheap, and it was like the beer he'd have to just serve and drink, because uh, this type of classic beer was quite popular in the 90s, and also 2000s, and still is. And everyone would serve two more classic because it was two more, but my dad was like, yeah, this tastes just as good and it's boatloads cheaper. Uh, and he would also drink porter and stuff like that. But back when, this is from back when Danish, Denmark was pretty much a beer desert, uh, like in the 90s. So the style of this beer is called a classic. It's actually not really a style. And if you look up on BJCP guidelines and things like that, you never hear of it. Uh, because it's kind of like a thing that was, attempted in Denmark. So what happened in 1993, uh, most sales of beer was Pilsner's. Carlsberg wanted to try and do something new. So they kind of, they or bring something back really. So lager beers, specifically Bavarian lagers, like kind of like Munich Dunkels and Wiener Lagers, Vienna Lagers uh, from, from Austria, stuff like that was quite popular. Uh, actually the Danish slang term for a brewski, a beer, is Baia, which stems from like the 1800s when most Danes would drink Bavarian style beers, mainly Munich Dunkels. And Carlsberg kind of wanted to bring this back, this style back, but looking at it as a big company is where they, I guess they were thinking how they could make it cheap. So they took Tuborg, their famous household brand, and they did a version called Tuborg Classic, which was like, I think the slogan was a tad bit more of everything. And basically what it was, it was a Pilsner dyed with caramel color. That's, up. That's it. Uh, no Munich malt, no nothing. Like the cheapest way of actually doing uh, what was similar to, uh, to the Munich Dunkel. So what you got was a style of beer that is, well, pretty much kind of in between, I guess, a Pilsner and a, an, a Munich Dunkel. And it's something you only really drink in, in Denmark. And it's so funny to hear when people talk, because people don't know, a lot of people, of course they don't. They're not beer geeks like us, right? Uh, but. It's like they talk about, if you talk to someone, oh, I really like a very nice dark beer, like a classic, and you're saying like it's just a Pilsner with caramel coloring, but hey, who cares? Um, and it's like, it's so funny, like it's still super popular. popular. And Cosberg last year launched the 1883, which was a traditional Munich Dunkel, which is, I think, miles ahead of the classics. But this was the classic that I drank growing up. I didn't drink classic specifically because I thought it was nice because it was darker. I drank it because it was what my, was my, what my dad had. So basically my dad would have cases of this. And when I would go partying, I was like, hey dad, can I grab a few beers? And he's like, sure. And I grabbed this and brought it with me because that was what we had. Uh, so in high school, I drank boatloads of this. And I think the last time I had this was actually a couple of years ago for a high school reunion. And I actually, uh, yeah, I just remember we talked with mean, the guys like, okay, this is gonna be fun. We're just, but we're gonna have to only drink Kudule Classic like back in the day. And I, oh, Lesser, the Sultan of Simcoe, him and I drank so many of them as well when he was a, a carpenter student. He had a, that's funny, he had a little basement where he had had a, his own little, I think it was, 
a storage room before, but we turned it into like a kind of like a bar pub type thing, or it was it was just a room with some couches and whatever, and we would party there and listen to metal full force and drink boatloads of Kudula Classic. Like there was a super <laughs> tiny table and it would just be filled with bottles from me and my friends and, and that's of course uh, the Sultan. Uh, so yeah, that was what we drank. It was super cheap and it still is. This is 2.75 crowns a bottle. You do not find beer that cheap, I think almost anywhere else in the world. 2.75 Danish crowns, how much is that? That is like less than 50 cents a bottle. A six pack is like 24 crowns, which is like three, four dollars. It's fucking cheap beer. Uh, and I, Denmark's kind of known for having lots of really cheap beer brands. Uh, this is just one of them, Harbo and what, I think a lot of people have these cheap beer brands as their go-to when they were younger. Um, but for me, it was this one. So it's, it's gonna be a little bit of a nostalgic review here. I remember slamming down, chugging loads of these when I was in high school. So this is this classic style I talk about, not really, a real beer style. It's 4.6% alcohol, and it used to say something with like caramel coloring and stuff on the label with the ingredients, but they removed that for some reason. And uh, yeah, it says, then close a book with smart brew because it's called uh, Ul. <laughs> uh, I actually don't think, I think they're just called Ulens. I don't think they're actually called Kurula. That's just slang that people started using for it. But Kurula is like a Danish term for something. Someone who's a bit rowdy. You usually use it with toddlers, like, or doing little kudul, whatever, something like that. Um, and actually also my grandparents drank this as well. So this is like, this is the beer that we drink in our family for some reason. But without further ado, let's check out the kudul classic. So we got it poured in a Pilsner glass. Uh, and some people might say this might be, uh, I guess, treachery or blasphemy to pour this in a gamma brewing glass. But hey, who cares? It's just beer, right? So pour is a, well, super clear, light copper color. Uh, it looks more brown on camera, but it's like really lightly copper. Nice effervescent carbonation, white head. Let's check out this nostalgic beer for me. Man, it's gonna be so weird revisiting this. This just, it's so nostalgic to smell that. It, it really doesn't smell good, but it's just so fucking nostalgic. It just reminds me of such great times and great summers when I was like, 18, 19, just having great fun with my friends, chilling outside, drinking this stuff for going to parties and whatnot. I mean, because we always drank beer. I don't know why. We never was like, like let's get hammered and luck. It was always beer. I don't know. Maybe it's because Les and my friend was a carpenter and my dad was into beer as well. I don't I don't really know, but it was always beer. But yeah, it's, it's slightly metallic. It's interestingly enough, not skunky, even though it's in a lime green bottle, which is quite common for these types of beers in, in Denmark. But... Slightly metallic, maybe, yeah, there I got a, maybe it's just a smidge of light struckness. And you can smell that it's, it's not really got any caramel Munich malt in it. There's like a slight soft undertone of something that's reminiscent of caramel, but not a lot. Other, other than that, it's like sweet bready malt. It's mostly malt for with slight grassy hop tones, but man, <laughs> I think people would puke if they drank it, but it just it smells so fucking nostalgic. Let's try it. This is going to be a long review. Sorry, guys, but I hope you enjoy the ramblings. It's just so nostalgic. Wow, it's weak flavored, though. Like, I remember it has maybe a bit more flavor, but maybe that's just me. It's not skunky on the flavor. It's like this light, it tastes like a lager with a light kind of hint of caramel. Super watery. The metallic bite is there for sure. Like this stinging, it's like sucking on pennies. It's actually quite metallic. And it has more bitterness than I remember as well. It has a slight sting of bitterness, but you can taste that this is a beer that's brewed to like the lowest price you can because there is like such small amounts of malt and hop flavor and whatnot. And it's just like, like, like lightly watery, beery flavor. It's, I'd say it's got more flavor than American light lagers. I'd rather drink this than your Bud Light and Miller Light and stuff like that because it's got a little bit more flavor. Um, but it's not a great beer, but it's really fucking nostalgic to drink. <laughs> mm. We had many a good time swilling this stuff, but I just remember it as, in, as having much more flavor. But yeah, it doesn't. So now you guys know what a classic is, and now you know what beer I drank, like growing up and you know when I was young. I'm still young, but when I was younger, 
getting introduced to partying and that kind of stuff for the first time. I'd love to hear what you guys, what were your like go-to college or high school beer? What do you drink all the time? I think a lot of Danes, it's Slut's Peaks now as well, because you could buy them bulk by the Danish German border shops, three cases for like a hundred Danish crowns. And that, how much is that? That's like 18 bucks for three cases. It's insanely cheap. Um, so I think a lot of high school kids drank that. And you still see it around. People still drink it. You can only get it at the border shops. Um, but yeah, this is, I don't even know if I want to rate this. This is just a little bit for fun. I don't think it's good. I would never give this a high grade, but I don't think it's so terrible that I wouldn't drink it. But I also think that's because I have a nostalgic relationship to, to this specific beer. So let's give it a middle of the road 50 and say for two, for 50, 25 cents, what are you going to get? I mean, come on. It's not half bad for a 25 cent, 35, 40 cent beer. <laughs> I don't think you can get a beer of that price anywhere else in the world. But hey, guys, if you're in Denmark, and by the way, you can only buy these at LD shops in Denmark. That's the only place. Uh, they're made by Vestvin. They're they have a very famous brown ale actually. Uh, well, it's called I was meaning the real brewery, but I think Vestvin also makes some of it. Uh, but and I I think these are the guys that own Ugly Duck now, isn't it? Isn't Vestvin and I was it together? I'm not actually entirely sure. I don't remember. But uh, yeah, if you're in Denmark, if you happen to come across an LD shop, go in there and look at the beer aisle and get get yourself a bottle of Kudul Classic just to try and see what. Uh, Danish nostalgia, at least to me, tastes like, and what really, really cheap Danish beer tastes like. So, if you've had a chance to try the Kuruda Classic guys from Poikulu this week, let me know what you thought of it. Here's to 5,000 chickens on Untapped and a bit of nostalgia from Peter the Master of Hoppets, and I'm going to say cheers! And remember to check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram and all that social media jazz. See you guys in another beer review.